Uh, we will have our um, synchronous session for today. Um, so, gato gagawin natin, no? Um, since uh, tomorrow is your scheduled uh, quiz one, okay? Is the, is the schedule for your quiz one. Um, let's get oriented kung paano natin i-conduct yung, ano, yung quiz natin and exams natin. Okay? Es es essentially, yung, ano, how we conduct our quiz, our quizzes. Okay? That's also how we will, ano, we will conduct our exams. Okay? So, here, in your, ano, in your class notebook. So, under ng, ano, under ng um, content library, tapos course information, you'd be seeing this page, quizzes and exams. Okay? So, this page contains the guidelines, the guidelines, okay, uh, in we, uh, that you need to, ano, to uh, consider when uh, taking your quiz. Okay? So, nandiyan yung schedule. Nandiyan kung paano yung distribution. Okay? Kung paano nyo siya i-open. Okay? Uh, paano nyo i-access yung questionnaire and um, the answer sheets later on. Okay? So, ano yung makikita nyo sa questionnaire? Ano yung makikita nyo sa mga answer sheets? Okay? So, yung mga steps essentially na gagawin ninyo um, in order to, ano, to... Uh, get or to ano to work on your quizzes and exam. Okay, so um, may reading ano may reading material akong provide for you. Okay, this one. Okay, but I also provided ano a recorded discussion of this. Uh, at kasama na sa recorded ano recorded discussion nito, yung discussion nitong uh, writing your reports. Kasi importante rin nito as part of the consideration sa paggawa ng ano paggawa niyo ng ano ng or pagsusulat niyo ng sagot niyo sa ano sa mga quizzes niyo okay uh, actually ano tinitingnan ko yung um, homeworks niyo um uh, sigurado ako marami sa inyo hindi pa nabasa tong ano hindi pa nabasa tong uh, guidelines na to kasi ang dami niyo hindi sinunod sa guidelines na to dun sa homework niyo okay so, sigurado ako hindi niyo pa masyadong nababasa ito. Okay, so again, um, pagkakataon niyo na para, pagkakataon na natin ito para balikan yung guidelines on how your reports should be written. Okay? And when you say reports, kasama dyan yung homeworks. Okay? Kasama dyan yung uh, quizzes, yung uh, sagot niyo sa quizzes. Kasama din dyan yung sagot niyo sa exams. Okay? So, ayun nga, based dun sa ano dun sa mga um, submissions na nakita ko sa homeworks uh, ang dami ng non-compliance dito dito pa lang sa part na to sa ano sa writing pa lang ng reports okay so again um, ang grade niyo ay nakadepende kung paano niyo ipe-present yung reports niyo so pagka hindi ano pagka hindi na, uh, kapag yung standard ng report nyo ay hindi according sa guidelines that were ano that were set eh wag niyo nang asahan na ay uh, uh, natin i-expect natin na hindi ganoon kataas yung grades na makukuha natin for that particular uh, activity okay so although yung homeworks pa ating palusutin yan kasi uh, hindi naman siya ganun, hindi naman ganoon kataas yung contribution niya sa ano sa sa final grade niyo but aside uh, but quizzes and ano exams definitely not kailangan ano kailangan sumunod tayo sa guidelines on how your reports must be written okay so may standard tayo para diyan okay so hindi natin basta-basta pinepresent lang yung ating mga um, sagot meron tayong kailangang way para gawin siya or para isulat siya okay so this is what we're going to do today no um, I will, ano, I will play the recorded lecture, uh, the recorded um, announcement regarding these quizzes and exams. Pero if I play ko lang yung ano, yung kasi ano, uh, the, 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 the entire thing is actually um, around, ano, almost two hours eh. Medyo matagal yung ano, yung na-record kong ano, video kasi eh, medyo mahaba din yung ano, marami rin yung mga guidelines. Again, dalawang guidelines yung na-cover ko dyan. Okay, bukod sa quizzes and exams, na-cover ko rin yung guidelines on how to write your reports. Okay, so medyo matagal to. 
So, matagal yung announcement. Okay. So, what I will do is I will just play siguro mga first 30 minutes nung ano, nung um, nung uh, recorded announcement regarding sa quizzes and exams. Okay? And then, uh, you may continue on watching on them dun sa ano, sa playlist ninyo. Okay? Sa playlist nung ating klase which contains uh, recorded se- uh, recordings of sessions and ngayon meron na kayong recorded lecture dito. Okay, may kasama na kayong recorded lecture ngayon. Okay, which pagkatapos nating you know, i-play itong ano, itong um, uh, recorded uh, announcement regarding the quizzes and exams eh magpe-play din ta- um ipe-play din natin yung ano, yung recorded lecture natin uh, for um topic uh, for lesson 2.4 yung second half ng lesson 2.4 yung iniwanan ko last time okay and then yung ano um, yung uh, part 1 tsaka part 2 ng lesson 2.5 actually yung lesson 2.5 yung may part 3 pa siya so hindi ko pa tapos i-record eh okay so ayun so i-play natin to later on pagkatapos natin i-play tong ano so uh, basically lahat nung ano lahat nung um, recorded recorded lecture recorded announcements and recorded uh, sessions live sessions are available for watching okay dito sa uh, YouTube playlist uh, provided for your class okay so yung link niyan actually pinobide ko na rin dito sa ano sa course information niyo under this page link to uh, YouTube playlist of recordings so by clicking here clicking this link, uh, mapupunta na kayo dun sa ano, sa uh, playlist sa YouTube. So, you can uh, you can actually find the recorded uh, lecture and or recorded announcements that you would like to watch. Okay? You would like to, ano, to uh, review kung sakasakali. Okay? So, ayun. Um, so, dito na yung link nung, ano nyo, nung YouTube playlist ninyo. Okay? Um, available na dyan yung, um, yun, yung sa quizzes and exams. And then yung um, recorded lecture para sa lesson 2.4 and lesson 2.5. Parts 1 and 2. Okay? So, ayun. Now, um, so, simulan ko to, okay? By playing the, ano, by playing the, uh, Recorded announcement about your quizzes and exams. Okay? Nagtindihan ba? Yes po, sir. Okay, so sige, wait lang ha. Okay. So I'll ano, I'll play the ano, the video. Okay? Um pero tell me kung ano ah, kung ah uh, tatanungin ko muna kung may audio yung video. Okay? Before I continue on playing it. Okay? So para ma-ensure natin na may audio yung video natin. Okay? Kita niyo ba? Kita niyo na yung video? Kita mo. Okay, so I'll play uh, I'll play the video. And then ano, um let's see kung may audio na siya. Okay. This video presents the guidelines on so, taking your quiz. May audio ba? And um this guide this uh, guide uh, this guidelines. May audio? Yes po, sir. Okay, so sige. O, ulit natin. <laughs> So again, no, I'll play the, no, I'll, I'll just play the first 30 um, minutes plus of this, no, of this video. Kasi nga medyo mahaba ito. Then you need to watch the rest of the video sa, ano, sa YouTube na para makompleto niyo yung buong announcement. Okay? Nagtindihan ba? Okay. Um, while, ano, while I am playing the, ano, the video, um, kung may questions kayo, just uh, uh, send it over the chat box. Okay, private message nyo para 
uh, maano natin, ma- maklarify natin. Okay? So, sige. Let's start. This video presents the guidelines on taking your quizzes and exams. And um, this guide, the, the guide, uh, these guidelines, uh, the written guidelines for the quizzes and exams are also provided in your um, class notebook uh, under the course and for, uh, under the content library section group, uh, course section, uh, uh, course information section, and quizzes and exam page. Okay, so. Um, this is your guide in taking your quizzes and exams in this class. As your, as your quiz and exam reports are a major source of your grades for the course, it is, in, it is very important that you comply with all the guidelines set forth in this guide. Make sure that you read and understand, that you read and understand each rule and make plans on how you can ensure 100% compliance to each. As a general rule, your non-compliance with the rules set forth here may cause you to, one, incur deductions in your quiz course, uh, obtain low scores for your submission, or worst case scenario, invalidate your submission either in part or in whole. Okay, so these are the guidelines. One, um, schedule of quizzes and exams. The schedule of your quizzes and exams are already posted in your class calendar. So you can basically see your class calendar here, um, in which uh, it would indicate uh, the date and time of your scheduled quiz. Uh, monitor changes in the class calendar and or announcement of changes in the schedule of these activities to so keep track of them. Quizzes are open for six hours okay, with a one hour grace period. Um, reports submitted within the one hour grace period are subject to point deductions depending on how late the submission was made. Uh, the maximum deductible points due to late submission will be 10% of the total number of points for the quiz. So for example, um, for a 100-point quiz, a maximum of 10 points may be deducted to date submissions. That's the maximum. But uh, the points to be deducted, deducted depends on how late the submission was made. Um, final exams do not have grace period and must, have, uh, uh, must be submitted at the date and time it is due to be submitted. Uh, after the, uh, for, quizzes, uh, uh, for quizzes, after the grace period and for the exams, after the um, submission due date and time lapses. Uh, submissions may not be uh, may not be uh, made, and um, it will not be allowed, especially if it is done outside the assignment module of Teams. So that will that, that will consider uh, that will uh, that will. Um, so if the student fails to submit uh, his quiz or exam reports uh, on the time and date specified, um, it is considered to be non-submission. Um, distribution of quizzes and exams. Your quizzes and exams will be distributed by the classes, classes teams to the assignment staff. So on the date and time of the schedule of your quiz or exams, the assignments module of teams will post and notify you that the quiz or exam is already open. So say for example, this is our teams. This is the, uh, the teams for our class. Uh, once the um, schedule for the start of the quiz or exam commences, you would see a notification from uh, the assignments module. So you will see here the uh, the quiz uh, number, okay, when it is due to be submitted. Okay. Now open the quiz by clicking the view assignment button. Uh, check out the time of submission and uh, check out the time of submission due and the instructions. So when you open your, uh, no, when, you, when you open the, um, or when you view the assignment, um, you would see something like this one, okay? So here, it specifies uh, when it is, uh, the time it is due, okay? And um, when it will close. So remember that there, for quizzes, there is a one hour grace period. So it will be due on, for example, 10 p.m., okay? So it means that if the submission is made on or before 10 p.m., uh, that is considered to be regular submission and will not entail any deduction because of late submission. But if the submission is made be, uh, after 10 p.m., but before 11 p.m., okay, um, the 
the submission with, uh, will be slapped with um, deductions as stated before. Okay. Then after 11 p.m., any submissions will not be entertained anymore. So here, uh, the instructions uh, are also provided. Okay. And these are the same instructions that are provided in the quiz form. Okay. So basically, when you see this, um, you can now you can click this um, button under the student work so that it would um, it would uh, lead you to the uh, quiz form. So more or less, the quiz form looks something like this. So uh, uh, on the banner, you would see the course uh, code and the uh, quiz number, okay, and the uh, um, and two links, two important things. The, the first one leads you to the questionnaire, and the second one uh, leads you to the answer sheets. So the questionnaire. So click on the first link to view the questionnaire. Note that you will not be able to download the questionnaire for data privacy reasons. Take note that this is a clickable link, so you can simply click on this one. Okay. So clicking the link to the questionnaire would lead you to this to this to this file or to this PDF file, which um, again is not downloadable because of um, privacy reasons. These are quiz questions, so uh, the questions here are supposed to be um, for your eyes only. Now let us zoom in so that we can read the contents. Okay. So um, on the first um, page of the questionnaire, you would read the general instruction for the quiz. So let us read it. The question code indicated in this questionnaire specifies the file name of the answer sheet template to be used to write your answers. More on that later. Download the answer sheet from the link to be provided on the quiz form. Again, more on this uh, later on. Make sure that as you download, the answer sheet is still named as the question code. For example, use Z101 and it's not modified. Also check carefully if you are using the correct answer sheet template for each question. Now work on each question below. Each question part is credited for 10 points maximum. The following rubric will be used to evaluate your responses for each question part. So the, the rubric to assess or to score your responses are provided here. So later on, we will uh, talk about this uh, in, in, in more detail. Now continue reading the instructions. Read and understand each question. Make sure that you're providing an accurate response to each question. Some questions may require tables, graphs, illustrations, etc. Make sure that each is provided when required. But you may also provide those, okay, even if the question does not require them, okay, but you feel that it will strengthen your argument and your response. So if the question really does not require uh, illustrations, graphs, tables, etc., but you, if you feel that it, it will make uh, your response better and um, more justified, then um, please do so. Just make sure that you are using them and interpreting, interpreting these um, materials correctly. Okay. Make sure to read and understand the guidelines in writing your reports. Check out your class notebook under the course information section for the page titled on writing your reports for the guidelines. We will talk about this again uh, later. Uh, Non-compliance of these guidelines may cause your responses to be scored low or overall be invalidated. Upload the accomplished answer sheets on their proper location based on their question code. Answer sheets uploaded on incorrect location will not be credited. So those are the instructions provided here in the questionnaire. Okay, so make sure that you understand these instructions. Now, if you scroll further, you will be able to see now the questions. Okay, so the questions would actually start on the second page. So here we display now the uh, the first question. Okay, as you can see here, uh, there is this question code which is QZ one hundred one. Okay, uh, the, this uh, the um, questionnaire also indicates the highest possible uh, score to be given for this particular question, and uh, the question parts. So basically, um, this question one has four parts: um, part A, part B, part C, and part D. Okay. So there are four questions under um, question one. Okay. Now, um, the question code is very is important uh, because it actually identifies the question and it identifies the uh, the answer sheet to be used. 
uh, when writing your responses. So the question code indicates the following. Number one, the corresponding file name of the answer sheet where your responses are to be written for the particular question. So in this case, um, this question code QZ101 requires the answer sheet QZ101 uh, uh, as, uh, as, the temp, uh, as, as the template for uh, writing your responses to each of these questions. Uh, aside from that, uh, the question code also uh, indicates the corresponding item in the quiz form where your answer sheet must be uploaded in order to submit your report. So as you can see here in the quiz form, um, question items are indicated by the question code. So here it means that you, ha you are to upload uh, your uh, report for QZ101 on this location using this button. Okay. So and uh, you have you are to, to, to upload the um, the uh, answer sheet, the accomplished answer sheet, okay, for uh, the question code QZ102 for uh, in this location by clicking this button. Okay, so those are the things that uh, that you need the question code for. So that is why it's really important that you uh, mine uh, the question code for each question. The highest possible score indicates the maximum credit points for the question. Each question contains parts. Um, in the sample case above, question one has four parts, part A, part B, part C, and part D. Okay. Um, each part is scored using the rubric shown in the questionnaire for a maximum of 10 points, which is the number indicated at the far right side of the question, uh, of the question part. So on the question part, on the questionnaire, you would see here uh, part A, okay, and then the question for part A, and then a number here. This number actually indicates the maximum credit points for this question. So your response for this question may be scored for a maximum of 10 points. So each of these is scored for 10 points. Now, um, the rubric is applied per part independently. So you, you, you use the rubric for part A for the, for, to evaluate the response for part A. You use the rubric to evaluate your response for part B, and so on and so forth. Okay. Now, let's proceed to the answer sheet template. Uh, the second link provided at the banner of the quiz form is the link to the answer sheet templates. So when you, uh, again, going to the um, quiz form, you would see here a second link, okay? Uh, download the answer sheet templates here. So if you click this one, it will lead you to the following OneDrive location. So as you can see here, um, there are two answer sheets available for quiz one. Uh, but this is just for sample quiz, okay? For sample quiz one. So you're, you're, what you do is you download them, okay? I, I suggest you download them individually so that uh, you, would, you wouldn't have any problem uh, with... Uh, with the file name or with anything. Okay, so let's um, save this into our workstation. Let me download uh, the second answer sheet. Again, I suggest that you do this one uh, one file at a time so that um, you wouldn't have any problems, especially with the, the file name. And uh, remember that as you download, you need to preserve the file name of uh, the answer sheet template. So now we have downloaded here the answer sheets uh, with the code QZ101 and QZ102. So again, as a reminder, uh, you need to preserve the file names uh, as QZ101 and QZ102. If you have um, inadvertently changed the file name, please revert it back to these file names. Okay. Now let us open one of the answer sheets uh, the for, for the first uh, quiz, uh, for the first uh, question. So here we have downloaded the answer sheets for each of the questions. Okay, so let's open them. So inside the answer sheet template, you would see that um, there are now spaces provided for each of the question parts. So since your question has four parts here, question QZ101 has four parts here, the answer sheet would also contain four parts. Okay, so there are now spaces provided. But um, before you um, proceed, with um, 
with writing your response, you first have to fill up this um, header with the information required. So you double click the header, double click this part to open them, and then you put in your information. Say, for example, this is um, De La Cruz. Uh, Juan Palermo. Uh, the course code, for example, is um, ECXXXX30. Okay. And the section is, say, for example, um, ECE191. Okay. So you have to accomplish that, those uh, information first. Okay. Now, after that, you can now proceed in writing your response. Okay. So, um, first thing, uh, when you write your response, okay, okay, when you write your response, um, it is very important that you review the guidelines on how your report must be written. Okay, now these guidelines are written on the page on writing your reports posted on the course information section of your class notebook. Now let us um, let us uh, take some time in order to review those guidelines on guide on writing your reports. Okay, what are the what should be the guidelines that must be followed when writing your reports? Okay. So first um, number one, answer incomplete sentences and provide context to it. So for starters, answering questions in incomplete sentences or in sentence fragments is not fun to read. Okay. So if uh if this is the question, okay, if this is the question, and you answer something like this one, this is not a very good response. Okay, because this is how a child in grade school would answer that question. Okay. It uh the child would only give one or two questions because um that's the limitation of his or her vocabulary. But you are not um, grade school students. You are engineering students already. You have way more vocabulary and more wisdom than grade school students. Okay? So therefore, you should be able to answer questions in complete sentences. So this is an example of a better answer. Okay? So aside from giving answers in complete sentences, elaborate on your answer so that you can demonstrate the thought process that went behind the generation of the answer. Okay. So for example, uh, this is a question. Okay. So again, as we discussed, an uh, answer just with one or two words is a very bad answer. Okay. But here, um, it actually provides okay, the thought process which um, justifies uh, the answer elevator. For example, um, the answer states that the, an elevator is an example of a feedback control system. Now, the answer goes on by saying that the control systems consist of subsystems that interact to produce an output. It commanded using an input signal. Okay. So, um, what will the what the student do? What will the student do here is that he will justify the um, the elevator as a system by using the definition of a control system and pointing out that this definition okay, or, the, or the definitions or, or the, the elevator complies with uh, the requirements of the definition. Okay, so first he states that an elevator is a mechanical system driven by a motor and its driver belts, pulleys and counterweights to move a loaded elevator car to ascend or descend. So that is where it um, uh, the student justifies that an elevator consists of subsystems okay uh, that interact okay now a user uses button to send a signal to the system okay which um, consistent with this part of the definition okay and what happens if we command a control system using an input signal it moves the car to a certain floor and the elevator car responds to that input by moving into the floor where the user has commanded it to. So it produces an output when commanded. Okay. So therefore, um, the student provided a, uh, no, a um, the thought process by which uh, the, 
uh, the thought process used in order to um, justify his answer of elevator as a as an example of a control system. Okay. So another example here is that what is the polar form of a complex number? Okay. So a bad answer would be something like this one. It just writes the, a number in the complex form. So a better one is to actually expound on the idea. Okay. So a complex number in rectangular form x equals x plus i y can be expressed in smaller form. Okay. With r equals there, there and theta equals there. Okay. And so on and so forth. Okay. So these are not perfect answers, but these are better answers than the first. All right. These answers provide factual information of the basic table. It means uh, it as when your answers are like that, it means that uh, you are uh, you are aware of um, the basic facts that surround the topic or the, the question. Okay. So the answers had contains or had some de number of details that the student was able to accurately uh, use terms and to precisely connect the, these terms to each other. Okay. So one thing that uh, you are to as to be assessed to is your use your, your use of terms related to the subject matter that is being uh, uh, talk about or is being asked okay so the thing is that um, we will only, we will only be able to understand uh, we will, uh, one manifestation of us understanding topics is uh, we can accurately use terms okay um, we can actually uh, use terms uh, in order to explain uh, things in and around or in order to discuss uh, matters in and, in, in and around the subject matter. Okay. So third, in the first question, especially the answer reflected the student's thinking in order to be able to consider an application via a control system, the application should contain elements of the definition of a control system. Okay. So these are important pieces of evidences. Uh, that can point to your achievement of the outcomes being assessed in these questions. Okay, so to summarize, answer questions with enough detail so that the answer becomes reflective of your achievement of the student outcomes. Number two, uh, use figures, tables, graphications into your answers. So the best answers to the questions are those that provide elements that support the argument being raised, whether these elements are being Hi, class. Did you Dinig ako, class? Mukhang dinig ako kasi nagpipeedback sa, sa cellphone ko. Okay, so, ano no? So, I, I, I'd, I'd stop the, ano, the playing of the recorded ano, announcement na about the quizzes. Okay. So, I'd expect na ano, itutuloy nyo yung um, panonood nyan. Okay. Uh, over YouTube. Again, um, the, ano, the link okay, to that uh to, to to the playlist okay uh yeah to, to to the playlist for uh youtube playlist which contains uh all of the recorded um stuff that uh our class produces whether it's the recording of our live session um recorded lecture uh, uh recorded discussion for each of the topics uh, uh for the class or other things, recorded announcement, okay? So, then dito, na, dito, dito natin siya ilalagay lahat. Okay, so, if you click on this, it will lead you to the uh, YouTube playlist of all the uh, recorded stuff that our class produces. Okay, so, ayun. I'd expect na, yun nga, itutuloy nyo na lang yung panonood noon, nung uh, announcement na yun. Okay? Dun sa, dito. So, ito yun, yung pinapanood natin currently. Okay, naintindihan ba? Okay. Um, I would really like you to, ano, to pay attention on data, kasi alam niya sa lang ano. Um, tal dito. Uh, don't. Hindi ako, hindi naman ako sa ano, nagtetreten. Pero, um, I, I would really like, uh, you to be trained to write, ano, to write, uh, reports properly. Kasi this is something that ano that uh, I noticed especially sa mga ano kumukuha na ng thesis that um medyo hirap mag-produce ng ano ng ng uh, maayos na reports maayos na manuscripts yung mga karamihan sa mga 
uh, na encounter kung kumukuha ng thesis. So um I would like you to be trained on on that ano, on that uh, angle or on that aspect of your ano. Okay? Uh, so aside from the technical things that we are learning in our class, okay? I would also like you to be trained on um some uh, on ano, on soft skills that is also required when you are already in practice, okay? And after all, required din naman ang ano, required din naman ang written communication skills at saka oral communication skills uh, sa ano, sa student outcomes natin. Okay, so that is why um, let let us uh, or let us use yung ating ano, yung ating um, quizzes, homeworks and um, exams together with your laboratory activities, yung activity reports niyo. Okay? Uh, let us use them as a venue to train you in properly writing reports. Kung, uh, kung, uh, uh, kung paano magsulat ng tamang reports. Okay, so yun. May mga nabanggit na ako doon. Like for example, um, presenting your answers in complete sentences. Okay? Kasi sa totoo lang, nakakainis din minsan pagka, kayo, pagka, ano, pagka nagbabasa kayo ng sagot. Tapos say for example, may tanong ka. Ang tanong is what is ganito. Okay, tapos ang isasagot sa'yo is one or two words lang. Okay? Eh, ang problema kasi yung mga ganong ano, mga ganong tipo ng sagutan, ano yun eh, ganun sumagot yung mga bata eh. Okay? Kung ano lang yung nakita ng bata, ano lang yung napansin niya, okay, yun lang din yung isasagot niya. Which is understandable dahil bata yon, So, limited pa talaga yung vocabulary niya. So, in your case, hindi kayo ganun. So, um, yun. Uh, I would like you to ano, be trained on that. Simulan natin sa pagtitanong kayo at sa uh, pagsasagot kayo sa isang tanong, use complete sentences and provide context to your answer. Hindi lang isang ano, hindi lang kayo sasagot ng sasagutin niyo yung tanong, mag-provide kayo ng konteksto nung sagot niyo. Okay? So, yan natin yan, i-train natin yung mga sarili natin diyan. Okay. Now, um Let's uh, move on, okay? By ano, by um by continuing on the discussion that we have ano left behind last time. Okay? So I believe ano, I believe na ano ko na antaw dito. Um we are on ano, lesson 2.4. Pero nandun na ako sa part nung ano we we uh we are already on the part of um what we call yung ano craft inequality okay so parang uh, i remember na lesson 2.4 tayo then nandito na tayo sa ano sa part na to yung craft inequality okay so nakita niyo may markings na yan because uh yun nga ito yung ginamit ko during the recording okay so uh the things that you would be seeing there Okay, are the things that uh, I have made uh, during the time or during the yeah during the time that I have recorded your uh, your lecture for this. Okay, so um, so this discussion, yung ano, yung mapap, yung discussion on uh, lesson two point four is a continuation of what we have discussed last time. So, magsisimula yan dito sa part na to, sa craft inequality. Okay? So, by the way, wala ba kayong questions regarding sa guidelines ng quizzes so far? Wala naman, sir. Okay, so, sige. So, we'll continue on with the discussion, okay, by playing this, ano, this uh, recorded lecture. Okay? And then, uh, again, kapag may questions kayo, just ano uh, just put it uh, just uh, send it over the chat box okay so ayun dito ko na pakikinig ako may audio siya hindi pa siguro may feedback to okay so sige so this um uh, recorded lecture picks up on the uh discussions uh, that uh, were made before. Okay. 
So the last time uh, we were on the topic of um, lossless source coding theorem, in which we have defined the uh, the first fundament fundamental limit that uh, we have to surpass in order for or we have to comply with in order for us to uh, make a um, reliable transmission over um, a communications uh, a an electronic communication system. Okay, so this limit is essentially uh, concerns about uh, the transmission rate of the message and the entropy of the source. So we have already mentioned that this limit should be, uh, we have already mentioned that the transmission rate of the uh, of the message must be greater than or at least equal to the entropy of the source. Now, um, we are in the part where uh, we have already discussed yung mga requirements natin with regards to the um, codes that we wish to uh, we wish to synthesize for our source. Okay. Uh, the thing is that uh, we have just mentioned them as uh, qualities or characteristics. Okay. At this point, we would like to uh, we would like to quantify them or put them into numbers para mas ma characterize natin siya uh, ng mas uh, mas methodical. Okay. So in this case, uh, we will and at this point we will introduce uh, yun din tawag natin craft inequality. Okay. Or in some books, um, this one okay, is also termed as the craft macmillan inequality. Yun. Okay. So our main objective is to devise a systematic procedure for constructing uniquely decodable variable length codes that are efficient. Okay. So variable length codes that are efficient in the sense that the average number of bits per source letter. Okay. Again, let me remind you, this bits does not again pertain to the bits of a binary code word okay uh, it pertains to the amount of information contained in a message in a message hindi ito yung bits again that uh, pertains to the uh, binary digit of a code word okay so um we would like to ano we would like to design Okay, the, the, our, our main objective for the for the design of algorithm uh, of the algorithm that would generate our source code would be uh, it would be uniquely decodable. Okay, it would be uniquely decodable. It is efficient. Okay, and efficiency would be defined in terms of the number of average bits, the average number of bits per source letter, which we will define as the quantity. Uh, here, okay. Now, notice the symbol here as R bar, okay, not R, okay. So in the you know, in the statement of um, uh, source coding uh, theorem, lossless source coding theorem, ang ginamit nating limit or ang ginamit nating uh, quantity doon, okay, is transmission rate, which is R, okay. In this case, um, we will ano, we will use instead the ano, kasi ang problema kasi with R. Uh, the transmission rate as a quantity, okay, as a quantity, is that um it actually you know, it actually involves uh time, kasi nga rate she. it's a, it's a rate it's a rate of um change quantity, so therefore um we re, we have we should have a sense of um the number of or or the amount of information that we have to transmit over time, okay, so. Um, let's use let's use a quantity that ano that uh, is not dependent on time. Okay, so instead let's um, specify that quantity to be in terms of uh, the average uh, number of bits per source letter. Okay, which is computed as this one. Okay, so we would like this R to be minimized. Okay. Um, because uh, we would like it to be minimized because later on we will we will be able to discover that um, the closer okay, uh, the closer the r bar okay, to the entropy okay, the more efficient the code okay. so although um, the, uh, no, the 
so remember that we have spe specified the you know, the source lossless source coding algorithm limit as your transmission rate should be greater than or equal to the entropy contained in the source. Okay. This would also, I know, we would, we would, I know, we would um, provide later on another statement of this limit. Pero in terms, naman of, I know, of the um, of R bar or the average number of bits. So, ang magiging statement natin dyan is almost the same. That is R bar should be greater than or equal to the entropy of the source. Okay. So, while we would like the, ano, the um, average number of bits to be higher okay, than the entropy, kasi uh, that is where transmission would happen. Eh. Okay? Remember that uh, tra uh, transmission is only possible uh, sa, sa isang digital communication system if um, this first limit is surpassed. Okay? But um, we would discover later on that um, codes would be more efficient if this R bar is actually close to the entropy. Yung pagiging malapit niya sa pagiging equal nila. Okay? So, there. So, the more, ano, the more, the closer the R bar to the, ano, to the entropy, the more efficient the code is. Okay? So, the craft macmillan inequality, okay, states that a necessary and sufficient condition, okay, a necessary and uh, sufficient condition necessary and sufficient condition for the existence of a binary code okay, with code words okay, having lengths n1, n2, up to nl, okay, in which you would notice that um, the, the lengths of the code words here are arranged uh, in increasing order. So n1 is less than n2, n2 is less than n3, n3 and so on would be less than nl. Okay? Now, um, so this condition, the craft inequality, if satisfied, okay, um, is said to, ano, is said to pertain or is said to, um, if, if code words, okay, parang ganting statement, if the code words, okay, or the binary code words, um, satisfy, Okay, satisfy um, this craft inequality. So let's call it KI, the craft inequality. Okay. Um, it turns out that these code words also satisfy the prefix condition. Okay. It will also satisfy the it can also satisfy the prefix condition. Again, ha, ang ano don, ang keyword don is it can. Okay, it can satisfy the prefix condition. Okay. Kasi um what the ano what the inequality measures is actually yung ano yung um, length of each code word representing each message okay ngayon um you may ano you may be able to specify yung ano yung tamang set of um, lengths for each of the code words or for all of the code words in a ano in a given set of code okay pero it doesn't necessarily mean na yung mismong code ay magsasatisfy ng prefix condition Basta ang sinasabi natin dito, what we are trying to say here is that if the craft inequality is satisfied, prefix condition can also be satisfied. Okay? So, the craft inequality okay, is useful uh, for checking if there exists a prefix code within a given set of code word lengths. So, kung um, meron, tayong, ano, meron tayong set of code word lengths, we would be able to check using the craft inequality. We, we, we would be able to check Okay. Um, we would be able to check use craft inequality. Okay. Uh, to check if a prefix code or if the prefix condition can be satisfied. Uh, given the set of a uh, code word uh, lengths uh, and that code word length is nk or nl sorry nl okay so mati check natin ngayon kung um kung yung um yung um 
set of code word lengths, okay, will be able to ano, will be able to generate a code that satisfies the prefix condition. Okay? Pero yung ano, if for example, meron na kayong naka-design na code, tapos alam niyo na yung uh, uh, code word lengths ng bawat isang code. And then um chinek nyo. Okay, chinek nyo using the craft inequality whether it is uh, whether the craft inequality is satisfied or not. Okay? Um, it is possible that uh, the craft inequality is satisfied for the given set of code, code word lengths. Okay? But it may also be possible that kahit na nagko-comply nagko-comply yung code mo sa ano, sa craft inequality. Okay? It is possible na yung mismong code mo is not compliant with the prefix code. Okay? So we just we can only check okay if a prefix code or if um if um the set of code word lengths can can ano can generate a, a a code that satisfies the prefix condition but um for the generation of the of the prefix con, uh, of the codes that satisfy the prefix condition themselves it's another matter okay so ayun now let's ano let's take a look at ano at example 8 which in which we will consider five different source codes proposed for a memoryless source uh, x okay with four elementary messages so our ano our source uh, has uh, four uh, messages a1 a2 a3 and a4 okay and then uh, we uh, there there are five codes okay uh, designed for uh, such source okay so let's try to determine the craft number Okay, let's call this ano, yung yung right yung ano, yung left side ng craft inequality. Okay, yung left side ng craft inequality. Let's call it as the craft number. Okay. So let's determine the craft number, this one. Okay. And um comment, let's comment on the results. Okay. So for code A, okay. So taking a look at code A, um let's ano, let's um count the number of ano, uh, let's determine the length of the code words for each of the message. So kung ilang ano, ilang uh, binary digits ang nag ang, ang nandun sa code word okay ng isang message. So message A1, ito, A1, A2, A3 and A4. Each of these have two. Okay, so ito yung NL bale. Okay, or NK, NK pala to. Sorry. So NK. So this has two binary digits, this has two binary digits, two binary digits and two binary digits. Okay, so therefore, the set of um, code word lengths, okay, this is the what we call now the set of code word lengths. Okay, this is the set of um, code word lengths, okay, NK. So we can write it as a set. Now we will use that to, uh, no, to um, compute the graph number. So we will have to substitute it in this ano, in this formula. Okay? Substitute natin just sa formula na yun. Okay? So that would be simply uh, 2 raised to negative 2. Okay? So 2 raised to neg itong negative na to. Yeah, negative. Tapos 2. Okay? Plus 2 raised to negative 2 plus 2 raised to negative 2 and so on. So that would be equal to um, 4 times 2 raised to negative 2. So that's simply 1. Okay? So yung ano natin, yung um, graph number natin for, ano, for code A is 1. Okay, so that's the craft number for code A. Now for code B, so this is your code B. Okay, so the um the we determine the code word lengths for each of the code that represents your ano that represents your message. Okay, so this is your N K. So yung first code nyo is represented by one binary digit of code, and then the rest are represented by three binary digits of code. So the set of code word lengths that we have is this one. So 1, 3, 3, and 3. So we use now this formula to compute for the graph number. So we have 2 raised to negative 1, plus 2 raised to negative 3, plus 2 raised to negative 3, plus 2 raised to negative 3, and so on. So th that is uh, computed as 7 over 8. So therefore, for code D, the graph number is 7 over 8. Okay? Now let's continue on with code C. Okay? So for code C, we determine the code word lengths. Okay. So we have here uh, NK. So the first uh, code word has one binary digit of code. 
the second one has two and the rest have three. So this is the set now of your code word lengths. So to compute the graph number now, we use again the formula. So we'll have two raised to one plus two raised to two. Uh, I mean two raised to negative one plus two raised to negative two plus two raised to negative three plus two raised to negative three. That, that gives you one as the graph number. So for code D, we again determine the set of code word lengths. Okay. So we have for the first code, we have one. Then for the second and third code, we have three and three. Okay. And then for the third code, we have two. Okay. So we have the set of code word lengths as one, three, three, two. And as you can see, this is actually essentially the same as this one. Okay. Uh, the same as code C. Okay. Uh, it's just that uh, makibala ng arrangement ng uh, code word lengths. Pero essentially pareho lang yan. So one din yung lalabas na graph number nyan. Okay, or graph Macmillan number. And then finally, for code E. So these are the codes for code E. And uh, we generate or we determine the code word lengths for each code. So we have here 1, 2, 3, uh, 3, and 2. So those are the number of binary digits for each of the codes. So we have the set 1, 2, 3, and 2. So we compute now. Okay. We compute now the craft Macmillan number for code E, and it turns out to be 9 over 8. Okay, now let's um, comment on the results now. Now, first we, uh, no, we, so we take a look at um, code A and take note that um, code A is um, constant length. It's a, um, it's a fixed length code. Okay, so the code words are, uh, ha have constant length. Okay. So if um since there are four ano there are four messages and um each ano each um code has two binary uh, two binary digits so we are sure okay we are sure that um each message would get their own code so therefore each of those code is unique so this a the, this code is a unique code okay now this is also decodable uniquely decodable without delay Essentially, because since uh, this is a fixed code, fixed length code, um, the decoder would only expect two bits, okay? And then from there, make ano, uh, can now decode. Pwede na siya mag-decode pagkatapos ng two bits kasi alam niya two bits lang naman lahat ng codes niya. Okay? So therefore, uh, uniquely decode, decodable yan without delay. Okay? So um, yun ang alam natin kagad sa, ano, sa um, fixed length codes. Uh, it's uniquely decodable kasi nga fix ng fiction length niya so, so the decoder would be able to ano to make a, make a decision okay after nung ilang bits okay and if tama yung pagkaka-design ng code it's unique also so ang titingnan natin diyan is that the length of uh, the code word should satisfy yung 2 raised to b na criteria where b is the number of binary digits of the code word. Okay, so yung L dito is the number of messages of the alphabet. And this is for ano, a fixed length code to ah. This is for a fixed length code. Okay, so since um apat yung ano nyo, apat yung um apat yung messages niyo, okay, A1, A2, A3, and A4, then meron kayong dalawang binary digits for each of the code, then this is satisfied. So therefore, unique yung code natin. Also, remember or recall, that the Kraft Macmillan number for code A is actually one, okay? Which now satisfies yung Kraft Macmillan inequality, okay? So again, um, the Kraft Macmillan inequality or the Kraft inequality states that, okay, the Kraft Macmillan number, okay, ito yun, yung Kraft Macmillan number or uh, KM number, okay, should be less than or equal to one, okay? So since this is one, um, we say that the you know the uh craft macmillan inequality is satisfied for um satisfied satisfied for code a okay which is the case naman for all ano fixed length codes okay it would uh fixed length codes will will always satisfy the craft macmillan or the yeah the craft inequality lagi yan okay Ah, uh, kaya lang problema lang talaga sa again, ang problema lang talaga sa fixed length code is that is yung inefficiency niya. Okay? 
So dahil nga sa hindi siya ano naka-base sa probability, um it tends to be inefficient in terms of uh transmission. Okay? Now let's move on to Kodi. Okay. So we see that uh the craft number that we have computed for Kodi is 7/8. Okay, so we recall that uh, we have we are, we are able to compute 7 eighths as the craft number for code B, which is less than 1. Okay, so therefore, um, code B also satisfies the craft inequality. Okay, so code B fulfill or satisfies the craft inequality. Okay, and also as you observe from the code, okay, since um, yung last three codes ni ano, ni code B are ano, are uh, three, ano, three binary digits. Okay. Um, it also satisfies yung ano yung uh, prefix condition natin. Actually, it's almost the same as this one. Okay, it's almost the same as this one. Okay. Um, yun nga lang. Um, ang isang ano lang dito. Ang isang medyo ano wala na wala na masyadong, wala na masyadong issue with ano with Kobe. Okay. So yun nga. Um, mas mahaba lang yung codes na ginagamit niya for ano for the rest of the ano the rest of the uh, messages compared to code A. Okay. Pero actually, yung characteristics ng code A, ay ng code B, is almost the same as the characteristics of code A. So, meaning, this is also ano, uh, uniquely decodable. Okay. Um, without delay. Kasi ano, um, pag na-encounter mo kasi yung zero as a, as a code, okay, um, alam mo na madedecode mo siya sa A1 kapag nag-iisa lang yung nakita mong zero. Pero pag pero pag may naunang 1 diyan, okay? It means that you cannot decode the next zero as a as an a1. Okay? Um In fact, kapag ka, ano, kapag ka 1 0 ito, okay? Without actually waiting for the third ano, the third uh the third uh, bit, okay? Uh the decoder can actually outright, dalawa pa lang to ha, can outright decode it to a2. Okay? And kapag ka na-receive naman niya yung um um uh, code word na 1-1 one, one at the start, then yun, kailangan niyang hintayin yung third bit. So, kasi kapag ka nag-0 yan, tsaka niya lang madedecode dyan to A3. Or kapag ka nag-1 yan, tsaka niya lang madedecode to A4. Pero still, kapag ka, ano, kapag ka ang lumalabas sa code ninyo is, ano, uh, yung 0 ay may kasunod na 1. This is not to be, ano, the, the decoder would not confuse this to be for A1. Kasi may naunang 1 sa kanya. Okay? So, therefore, um, this is uniquely decodable. Okay? So it also ano it also implies that it satisfies the um prefix condition. Okay? But tatandaan lang natin again ha. Ay tatandaan natin again. Um the craft inequality, okay, tests um whether code word lengths, okay, uh, can result in a code that satisfies the prefix condition. Okay? But even if yung code word lens mo ay eh, nagsasatisfy ng uh, craft inequality pero mali pa rin yung design ng code mo okay then uh, maaring mag-violate pa rin siya ng prefix condition okay so hindi siya ano ha um, parang hindi if craft inequality is satisfied okay if craft inequality is satisfied uh, it doesn't really follow agad okay that prefix condition is satisfied Okay. It does not ano, it does not uh, follow agad. Okay? Uh, more of like ano, parang if the prefix condition is satisfied. Okay? If the prefix condition is satisfied by your code. Okay? Then the set of code word lengths, okay? The set of code word lengths satisfies the craft inequality. Okay. So remember that the craft inequality just tests okay whether it is possible to have a prefix code for a given set of code word lengths. Okay? So yun. Now let's take a look at code C. So we see that uh, the the code word C uh, satisfies the ano the craft inequality. Okay? It satisfies the craft inequality. And observing the code words themselves. Okay? They also th these codes also satisfy the prefix condition. Okay? So, wala naman tayong makikita prefix dito kasi ito is not a prefix of any of the succeeding codes or longer codes. So, yun. So, C is uniquely decodable, okay? And um, satisfies the craft inequality. Okay. 
So now let's proceed with code D. So we have ano, uh, noted na yung set of ano, code words, a uh, code word lens for C and D, pareho. Okay, so that is, ano, that is um, one, two, three, three. Ito naman, ganun din. Uh, one, three, magkaiba lang ng arrangement. So one, uh, three, three, at saka two. So pareho sila ng set of code word lens. Okay. So we take note that both of them would satisfy the craft inequality. So code C and code D would both satisfy the craft inequality kasi pareho nang magiging craft number yan. Okay, or craft map nila number. Okay. But here's the thing. Ito yung sabi ko kanina pa. That um the ano the craft the, the the satisfaction of craft inequality does not really follow the satisfaction of the prefix condition. Okay. Um kung titingnan niyo yung ano yung pagkaka-design ng codes ng uh, code D eh nagva-violate na to ng prefix condition. Okay? So, itong code kasi na to, itong 11 na code na to, okay, is actually found on a longer code. Okay? It's actually found on a longer code. So, therefore, um, this code violates, okay, this is a prefix code. Eh. This is a prefix code. Okay? So, this violates um, the prefix condition. So therefore, this is ano, this is um a code that can be decoded, pero kailangan na, uh, that would cause consider considerable delay. Okay, so again, ang sinasabi natin, given na ano, given na mer meron kayong set of ano, of um code word lengths, okay, kahit na pareho yan, okay, kung sablay talaga yung pagkaka-design ng code niyo, okay, it would um it would still lead to a code that violates the prefix condition. Okay? Even if the set of code word lens leads you to think that uh, um, it satisfies the craft inequality. Okay? Now, finally, um, if, we, you know, if we remember in code E, so hindi ko nilalagay yung code E dito, uh, that uh, the craft number for uh, code E is 9 over 8, which is more than 1. Okay? So therefore, the code... Uh, uh, the set of code word lengths for code E, which is ano, uh, was determined to be one. Um, na, na determine natin yun na si to. Ito, one, two, three, two. So one, two, three, two. Or say, sabi, i, i, natin, isunsun natin na. One, two, two, three. Okay. So given this set of code word lengths, um, impos, ano, um, hindi kayo makakapag design ng ano, ng code nito. Kapag ito yung ginamit yung set of code word lens para sa design ng codes ninyo, okay? You would not be able, you would not be able to design any, any ha, kahit ano, any code that uh, complies with the prefix condition. So hindi hindi kayo makakapag-design ng kahit anong code. Basta yan yung set of code word lens. Okay? So, yun, yun ang ano natin, yun ang um ob ang titingnan natin with the craft inequality. Okay? Um we can um determine uh or we can ano, we can predict. Okay? Uh using the set of code word lens, okay? If a prefix if a code that satisfies the prefix condition is possible okay pero again it is up to us to actually design a code okay it is actually up to us to design a code that is uh, compliant with the prefix condition okay okay so in the example 9 let us attempt to ano let us attempt to um design uh or synthesize a uh code for a five element alphabet uh, so, ang messages niyan is A1, A2, A3, A4, and A5. Okay? Now, here's the easiest way okay, to construct a code or synthesize a code that would comply with the prefix condition. Okay? So, um, this, is, ano, this is also under, under the assumption that the alphabet is arranged, okay, is arranged uh, such that okay, the probability of A1 Okay, is greater than the probability or equal to the probability of A2. Okay, 
and is greater than or equal to the probability of A3, greater than or equal to probability of A4. Kumbaga, um, this, uh, the elements or the alphabets are arranged in such a way that uh, the, the probability of their occurrences is decreasing. Okay? So, yun yung assumption natin lagi. As actually, when you, ano, when you are to design a code, this is actually the first, ano, the first task that you have to do. Arrange the um, alphabet in terms of decreasing um, probability of occurrences. Okay, so what would be the easiest way to ano to call, to synthesize a code for this alphabet for this ano for this source? Okay, um, since A okay would be the most ano would be the would be the message um that is most probable to ano to uh, occur. Okay, we would like to assign it with the shortest code possible. So let's assign a um one binary digit. For its code word, so let's use the symbol zero, okay, for uh, for uh, message A one, okay. Now, um, moving forward, uh, in order for us to ano, in order for us to make sure that the symbol or that this zero, okay, be not a prefix of another code word. Kasi magpe-prefix to kapag ka yung next code word natin, sinimulan din natin sa zero. Or any other co longer code word na gagamitin natin, isisimulan natin sa zero. Okay, so therefore, para maiwasan natin yung, ano, yung uh, violation sa prefix condition, kung zero yung ginamit natin symbol para sa first letter natin, then the next, ano, the next uh, message natin should begin with a one. So dun pa lang, naka, ano tayo, naka... Uh, nakatawid na tayo sa ano sa prefix uh, condition. Okay? Now let's ano, let's uh, pero wag lang yung one kasi baka naman uh, mahirapan naman tayo sa mga susunod kasi uh, after that uh, the only choice that we will have is to ano is to use uh, one and zero para simulan siya. So we we, we cannot choose uh, or we cannot assign the symbol one only. Okay? For A2. Rather, we let's assign the symbol one zero. So that it, ano, so that uh, we 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 would still be allowed, okay. We would still be allowed to ano to uh, use um yung symbol na one zero, okay. Uh, uh, we would that we would be able to to ano to think of other symbols pa for other messages. So dito nga um since one zero in design natin para hindi siya maging prefix ng iba pa. Then the remaining code words should will have to start with one one. So A3 nga, gagawin nating one one zero. Okay. Then yung next symbol nyan should start with one one one. Okay. Now, um, so we'll assign uh, A4 to one 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 zero. And then since isa na lang yung AE1, then let's switch yung zero dito to one. So that we assign A5. This is A5, sorry. So this is A5. Okay, let's assign the uh, the message A5 to the symbol one 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 one. Okay, so this will now be the code okay, that we have constructed. Okay, so the question is, does, uh, is the code compliant or um, does the code lengths, code word lengths of code A satisfy the craft inequality? So tingnan natin. Um, the code word lengths here are 1, 2, 3, 4, and 4. So therefore, to compute the craft number for code A, okay, we will have the summation of 2 raised to negative uh, n k, okay, for k equals 1 up to L. So, yun na nga, isa isa lang natin to. So, this is 2 raised to negative 1, plus 2 raised to negative 2, plus 2 raised to negative 3, plus 2 times 2 raised to negative 4. Okay, kasi dalawa yung 2 raised to negative 4. Okay, so... So when we calculate the craft number for code A, we find that that, uh, that craft number is uh, equal to okay. So this craft number is equal to one. Okay. So therefore, it satisfies the craft inequality. So this is equal to one, which is uh, less than or equal to one. So therefore, um, craft inequality is satisfied. Okay. So it means that for this given set of ano. For this given set of code word lengths, okay, 
sa mga sa uh, for the given set of um code word lengths na uh, 1 2 1 2 3 4 and 4 uh, given yung set of code word lengths na yan um possible that a code satisfying satisfying the uh, prefix condition can be synthesized. So, possible yun. Pero again, uh, the design of such codes, okay, or what those codes are is another matter. Pero dito naman, dahil dinesign nga natin yung ano, yung code natin in this manner. Okay? Ensuring na walang magiging prefix condition kasi nga uh, pinipili natin yung uh, yung mga symbols natin in such a manner that they cannot be um, a prefix dun sa mga susunod na longer codes. Okay? Then we have ensured or we we we, we ensured ourselves that code A satisfies uh, the prefix condition. Okay? So, yun. Now, let's take a look at now. Let's take a look at code D. Kasi yung code D naman, kung papansin ninyo, also complies. Uh, hiwalay natin siya. Okay, so, notice that code D um, also satisfies the prefix condition kasi wala tayong makikita ang um, shorter code being the start or the prefix of the longer code. For example, yung 00, hindi nyo makikita sa dalawang code na to. Or yung 01 cannot be seen in any of this uh, two, three binary digit code. Or kahit yung 10. So wala tayong, um, this uh, shorter, shorter codes are not prefix, uh, are not uh, are not a prefix of the longer codes. Okay, so this satisfies, okay, the code, the, the, this code, so code B, uh, satisfies the prefix condition. Okay. But um, if you take action, if you take a look at the ano, set of code word lengths for code D, so we have two, 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 three, and three. Iba siya dun sa uh, set of code word lengths para sa uh, code A, which is ito, one, two, three, four, four. So sa code D, we have two, two, uh, two, three, three. So if you actually compute the, ano, the graph number for code D, Okay, which is the summation of 2 raised to negative nk, okay, for k equals 1 up to l, we will have 3 times 2 raised to negative 2. Kasi tatlo, tatlo tong, uh, code word let natin na 2. Okay, plus 2 times 2 raised to negative 3. Kasi dal dalawa tong ano, uh, code word lens natin na 3. So pag kinumpute natin ito, okay, itong craft number na to, this results to, a craft number of 1. Okay? So, a craft number of 1, meaning, nasa satisfy niya rin yung craft inequality. So, craft inequality is satisfied. Okay? So, again, nasatisfy natin yung craft inequality using this set of code word lens. And, um, yung mismong na-design na code para sa code B, uh, satisfies the prefix condition. Okay? So, again, na. Reminder, the craft inequality only tests whether it is possible to come up with a code that satisfies the uh, prefix condition. Okay? But uh, the design of such codes is another matter. Okay? So kahit na yung set of code word lens mo is uh, compliant with the craft inequality, kung mali talaga yung design ng code words mo, okay, then uh, mag pwede pa rin mag-violate ng prefix condition yung codes mo. Okay? So, here, we state another version of the lossless source coding theory. Okay? Now, this time, um, number one, this, ano, this uh, version of the lossless, um, uh, this version of the lossless source coding theory applies to codes that satisfies the prefix condition. So, kailangan, ano, kailangan, um, we apply this to, ano, to all those codes that uh, satisfy the prefix condition. Okay, so here, let x denote a DMS with finite entropy h, uh, h of x, okay, and output letters ai 
uh, for uh, i between 1 and n, okay, with corresponding probabilities of occurrence pi, okay, again, i from 1 to n. Now, it is possible to construct a code that satisfies the prefix condition, okay, and has an average length of r bar, okay, that satisfy this inequality. Okay. So um kapag ano kapag uh, we interpret it as follows, okay? Um specifically, it uh, this applies to ano to codes that satisfy the prefix condition. Okay? Um we also specify the limit of ano, we also specify the limit of uh the the transmission, okay? Ah uh, the ano of the of the amount of information in terms of the code word length uh, r r bar okay instead of the transmission rate r okay so um ngayon um we can ano, we can um consider okay we can now consider na in some in our ano in our next lesson na ang gagawin natin ngayon is instead of actually specifying the limit or the compression limit for our source codes Okay, as ano, as the um, transmission rate uh, R, okay, we instead specify this compression limit in terms of the average uh, code word uh, length, which is uh, specified as R bar. Okay, so ngayon, yung limit ngayon ng ating... Uh, transmission uh, or transmission would only happen okay uh, and um, decoding is possible okay if r bar is between the values of the entropy of the source and the entropy of the source okay plus 1 so ito yung um, source lossless source coding al uh, limit or compression limit natin for uh, specified in terms of the Average code word length. Okay, so there. So this ends the the, uh, the lesson on um uh, lossless uh, source uh, coding uh, theorem. Okay. In the next lesson, we will uh, discuss the formal algorithms that uh, are used to to synthesize um variable length codes and fixed length codes. For your source, uh, for your, uh, no, for your message sources. Okay, so hello. Ayo, dinig pala ako. <laughs> May monitor speaker ako ngayon. Okay, so um, so that ano that um finishes up yung ano lesson two point four natin. Okay, so we continue on with lesson two point five. Okay, so which is about um discrete uh discrete source coding algorithms. So, um in this lesson, it dito na hindi discuss yung mga ano yung mga algorithms that um that synthesizes or that can synthesize source codes. Okay, and um as you will be able to ano to observe, itong mga algorithms na to are are actually based on ano on um or they actually synthesize code taking into consideration the ano the um the probabilities for uh, the probability of occurrences of the message of a certain uh, alphabet okay so yon so let's listen into this ano to this uh, recorded lecture um and by the way medyo mahaba to okay so it's likely that uh, we will not be able to finish the entire thing for our session uh but again, ah, these are available already on your, um, ano, on your uh, playlist. Okay, so, ayun. So at this point, we will now um, discuss the um, algorithms that uh, can be used to synthesize discrete source codes. Okay. So we will limit our discussion on ano, on the generation on of source codes for discrete memoryless memoryless sources or DMSS. Okay. So 
um, we also have discussed in a previous uh, lesson that um, there are two kinds of ano, there are two kinds of um, compression or yeah compression algorithms uh, used to design uh, used, used to synthesize source codes. Uh, those uh, algorithms that design variable length codes and those that uh, that uh, synthesize um, fixed length codes. Okay, so we will discuss um, some algorithms that implement those uh, two classes of algorithms. Okay. So we start with um, with algorithms that generate or um, synthesize variable length source codes. Okay. Uh, the one of the most uh, efficient uh, algorithm uh, and um, easiest to um, write on is the um, Huffman code algorithm or Huffman coding algorithm. So in 1952, Huffman devised a variable length encoding algorithm based on the source letter probabilities. Okay. So this algorithm is optimum. So this algorithm is optimum in the sense that the average number of binary digits required to represent the source symbol is a minimum. Okay. So this algorithm generates a uh, the least this this is the algorithm that would generate the least R bar. Okay. This this algorithm would uh, would generate the least R bar. Okay. Of course, it's still subject to um constraint that the code words satisfy the prefix condition. Okay. Um now um again what we want is uh, no, what we want is uh, uh a, a, our code words, okay, our codes, okay, source codes that um, satisfy the prefix condition, okay, so that it is uh, uniquely decodable and instantaneously decodable. And at the same time, okay, we would like uh, the, the average number of binary digits or the R bar to be actually very low, okay, so that um, later on we will learn that uh, making this low would make the efficiency or would make uh, the coding efficiency or the efficiency of the code efficiency of the code to be greater. Okay? So, so there. So we um we are now we are now we are ensured that uh, Huffman codes okay are uniquely and instantaneously decodable. Okay. Now codes that have or that has the ano, that have the shortest average code word length R bar are called compact codes. Okay. Um, kapag, na, kapag, kapag ang algorithm can synthesize uh, a very um, minimal uh, codes with minimal uh, code word lengths, okay, uh, they are considered to be compact codes. Okay. So one of those compact codes that uh, or one of those algorithms that uh, can generate compact codes are Huffman coding algorithm. Okay, so let's demonstrate or let, let's illustrate the synthesis of how Huffman codes by means of two examples. Okay, first. So let's consider um, a DMS, okay, with seven possible letters, X1 up to X7, having the probabilities of occurrence as indicated in this table. Okay, so uh, we notice that the source letters are ordered based on decreasing orders of uh, decreasing order of um, probabilities. So this is what I was um, stating in a previous ano, in a previous discussion. Okay. Na kapag ka gagamit or kapag ka mag-implement tayo ng algorithm uh, that ano, that uh, uses probability of occurrences as a basis. Okay. We have to arrange the letters. Okay. We have to arrange the let arrange the letters in terms of decreasing um probabilities So makikita natin yan dito no sa table na to Okay So um always that uh, the synthesis the, the synthesis of Huffman code is aided by the construction of a tree diagram which we will call in our uh, case as a code tree Okay So we um ano we demonstrate the step-by-step -step process in the following table. So, yun na nga, no? First, 
list the probab uh, list the probabilities of occurrence for each letter in one column on the order of decreasing probability. So ito yun. Okay? Now, uh, next part, next step is to join okay, the two least probable letters okay, among the um, letters, among the set of letters. Okay? So titingin natin yung may pinaka mga, mga may pinaka mababang probabilities dun sa lahat ng set of letters. Okay? So, i-join natin siya sa isang ano, parang subset. Okay? Parang gagawin natin siyang isang subset ng ating ano, ng ating um, source alphabet. So, um, in this case, yung uh, the letters that have the lowest probabilities is itong X6. Okay? This X6 and X7. Okay? So, we'll combine um, X6 and X7 on a um, subset of our uh, letters. So we will call that as X bar or X6 prime. Okay. And then, um, uh, una, yung nasa taas na branch, okay, uh, would be assigned. So yung nasa, nasa, this is called the branch kasi nga code 3 ito eh. Okay. So when we join them, okay, they actually combine on a node. Okay. Magkocombine yan sa isang node. Okay. Ngayon, uh, dun sa node na yun, syempre yung paggagalingan nun, mga branches. So it, uh, it actually come from uh, two branches. Okay? So ngayon, yung upper branch, i-assign natin ng code na zero. Okay? While the lower branch would be assigned the code, uh, the symbol one. Okay? And then gagawin natin is ia, dun sa node, i-add natin yung dalawang probabilities na genoin natin. So we will add this probability and this probability. Okay, so having the sum, the, those probabilities will have the sum of 0.01. Okay, so yun yung first step. Now, ngayon, um, since we have combined, okay, we have combined um, X6 and S7 into a, ano, into a subset, okay, called X6 bar or X6 prime. Okay, so yung probability ngayon ng X6 prime is 0 0.01 na. Okay, and also, um, kapag ka yung ano yung x6 prime ang ginamit natin uh, instead of using x7 x6 and x7 this set of letters now is called the reduced source okay so reduced source siya kasi yung ating uh, letter okay this letter has been ano has been um, combined on a uh, on a set on another set okay so tawag natin diyan reduced source Okay? Now, we repeat that process. Okay? But this time, uh, ang ikukumpara na natin, kasama sa comparison natin yung, ano, yung um, kinumbay natin earlier. So, uh, um, so, join the two least probable letters okay, from the reduced source. Okay? So, titignan natin ngayon yung redu ano, reduced source na. So, ito, um, we're not looking now at this one. But instead, we're looking at these probabilities. Ito na yung mga titignan natin probabilities ngayon. So, ngayon, i-join natin or i-combine natin yung dalawang letters, okay, or dalawang symbols that have the lowest probabilities. So in this case, that would be X5 and, okay, this one, uh, huh? this symbol, at saka ito. Okay, yung X5 at saka X6 bar natin. So again, tulad ng ginawa natin ng first step, okay, dun sa node, okay, uh, dun sa node niya, i-add natin yung probabilities ng dalawang uh, symbols na yun. So we have 0 0.04 plus 0 0.01. That should give us 0 0.05 as their sum. Okay? And um, we would assign a, ano, a code of 0. Okay? We would assign a, the symbol 0 para dun sa upper branch. Okay? And 1 para dun sa lower branch nung ginawa natin uh, code 3. So, lagyan natin yung uh, naunang mga nilagyan natin kanina. Okay? So, now we have now the reduced source X1, X2, X3, X4, and X5 bar. Okay? So, yun na yung mga titignan natin. Okay? So, we'll repeat that, those, that, that process. We'll repeat that process for the reduced source. Okay? So, in that case, kung uulitin natin siya dun, so we will combine yung lowest, so titign ang titignan natin yung mga probabilities ito. 0 0.35, 0 0.30, 0 0.20, 0 0.10, at saka itong 0.05. Yan ay mga probabilities titingnan natin. Okay? So now, 
uh, we will join the la the, ano, the least the two least probable uh, symbols which in this case that would be um x4 okay at saka x5 bar so if you join natin siya on a node okay so then i-add natin yung um, probability nung dalawang um join natin so point uh, point 1 0 plus 0 0.05 results to 0.15 probability for uh, the subset x4 bar or x4 prime. Okay? And then, again, we will assign the following symbols. 0 para sa upper branch. Okay? 0 para sa upper branch nung ginawa nating um, bagong branch ng code 3. And 1 para sa lower branch. So, again, 0 to, 1 to, 0 to, uh, 1 to. Okay? So, again, so there. Okay, so we repeat that process okay, for the reduced source uh, x1 up to x4 bar. So ito na lang yung tinitignan natin, x1, x2, x3, and x4 bar. So again, we join the lowest two probabilities, which in this case, that would be x3 and x4 bar. Okay, we join them to create the symbol x3 bar, okay, which has a combined probability of point. 35. Okay. And yun, um, we will have the following assigned to the to, 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 to the following branches. So 0 para sa upper branch na to, 1 para sa upper branch na to, and previously, itong mga assignment na to has been made. Okay. So nagawa na yan kanina mga assignment na yan. So we continue again. Okay. But here, Ito yung tingnan natin, no? Okay, ito yung tingnan natin. Um, we are looking at, ano eh, we, we are looking at um, now, at, at, at least, ano, at this next step. We are looking at the probability, uh, at this, ano, at these symbols. So, ito, ito, tsaka ito. Okay? So, if we, ano, if we are to, ano, if we are to um, follow yung procedure natin, in which uh, we have to combine the symbols having the two lowest probabilities. Okay? Then, actually, may dalawa tayong option pagdating sa part na to. Okay? Kasi dalawa na lang naman yung, pro yung values ng probabilities na meron tayo eh, in this case. So, we have 0 0.30 at saka 0.35. Okay? We have 0 0.30 at saka 0.35. So, either, okay, kasi kung i-combine ko yung dalawang lowest probability, pwede ang i-combine ko ito. Yung dalawang yan. Okay? O kaya, pwede rin namang ito. Yung x1 tsaka yung x2. So, pwede, again, ha, pwede kong i-combine kasi nga, uh, if I'm looking at the, the two lowest probabilities and dalawang values na lang naman yung may iwan dyan. Okay? It's 0.30 tsaka 0.35. Okay? So, I have the option of combining um, x1 at tsaka x2. Okay? O kaya, I, 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 my, my other choice is to combine x2 with x3 bar. Okay? So, yun. Yun ang dalawang options ko dito. Okay? So, choosing the first option, okay, that is, ang i-combine ko is yung, ano, x1 at saka x2. I-combine ko sa isang, ano, sa isang node to create the x2 um, subset. Okay? So, magiging probability niyan is uh, 0.65. So, again, same thing. 0 ang naka-assign sa top branch. 1 ang naka-assign sa lower branch. And same thing dito. Susulat ko lang yung assignment nila before. This is 0, 0, 0. This is 0. This is 1. And this is 1, 1. Uh, 1, 1, 1. Okay. So, ayan. And then finally, since dalawa na, lang, dalawa na lang naman yung symbols ko, okay, ito na lang yan, x2 bar at saka x3 bar. So, I'll combine them as the last step. Co-combine ko na lang sila dalawa. Okay. So, Ayun, finally, join x2 bar and x3 bar. Okay, so the probabilities, the probabilities that you have joined at this step, okay, should add up to 1. Kailangan ang magiging sum na niya doon sa pinakadulong branch should be 1. Okay, so yun, ang magiging sum na dito is 1, which when we check, is 0.65 plus 0.35. So that's 1 nga, so tama. Okay, and then, um, uh, ayun, so this now, is the completed code tree. Okay? What uh, what you can see here is that uh, no, 
is the completed uh, completed uh, code tree. Okay. For the given source. For the source. Okay. So, ang tanong ngayon is paano siya babasahin? Okay. Paano babasahin yung code tree ngayon? Okay. So, ganito. Um, to read the, ano, to read the, the code. Okay. To read the codes for each letter. Okay. To read the codes for each letter. So, you start from the rightmost node. Okay. We start from the rightmost node. Magsisimula tayo sa pinakanan. Okay. We start here at the rightmost node. And then we trace the path. Okay. Trace the path towards the letter. Okay. Uh, reading of the binary digits along the way. So, babasahin natin yung mga binary digits na maladaanan natin. Okay? So, the most significant bit, okay, the most significant bit of the code, okay, is the first binary digit that you will read from, okay, the code tree. This is a uh, column statement from the code tree. Okay? So, there. So, for example, um, babasahin natin yung ano, yung code para, for example, kay X4. That's the symbol X4. So, tracing the path, starting from the rightmost, ano, rightmost area. So, simula dito sa, ano to, sa uh, part na to. So, tracing the path towards X, X4 uh, leads us to the following. So, itong one, okay, that's the most significant bit. So, yun yung ilalagay natin sa pinaka-left side no code natin para sa X4. So, Para sa X4, ang code natin is 1. That's the first one. Then, uh, we will have to, ano, we will have to go down here. Okay? So, that gives us, uh, again, nadaan natin yung 1. Okay? So, that's another one. Okay? As, as part of the code word. Then, finally, 0. Okay? 0. As its third uh, binary digit. So, yun. Doon natin makukuha yung X4. So therefore, ang assigned code word natin para sa X4 is um, 110. Okay? So you can, you can actually check uh, these codes okay, from your code tree. Okay? Pwede, pwede nyo i-check yan. For example, si X1 okay, is um, si X1 eh. Um, that is uh, 0. Okay? And then zero. Okay, so yeah. So x one is zero zero. Okay. Uh, while x two, so x two naman is uh, zero. Okay. And then one is one. So x two is zero one. Okay, and so on. So uh, I leave it to you to ano to verify yung uh, mga codes na to galing dito sa code three. But that's how we read the the uh, ano, the um, accomplished or completed code tree for our source. Now let's ano, let's um, let's tabulate the ano, the uh, information okay, that we have for our uh, synthesized code. Okay, so ano yung mga kailangan natin sa information natin or sa table natin. So aside from the codes, okay. Aside from the codes, um, let's compute yung self-information nung bawat letter. Okay? So, again, self-information is computed using this formula. Okay? That's the negative log of the probability of um, the occurrence of uh, the letter okay, uh, to the base 2. Okay? So, in this case, for example, um, Yung self, yung self information for example ng letter x1 which has a probability of um, 0.35 is computed as yun. So negative log of 0.35 to the base 2 is 1.5146. Uh, okay, so that's the self information. Okay? So ayun. Um you can ano, you can proceed with uh, the others, okay? For example, uh, for x2 which has a probability of 0.3 Okay, so ang kanyang self-information is 1.7370. Okay, 
So please verify this, ano, these values by computing the set information for each of the letters using this formula. Okay. Now, um, we compute the entropy. Okay, we compute the entropy of this source. Okay, by using this formula that we have studied in um, a previous lesson. Okay, so this is the sum of the probability of uh, occurrence of each um, letter times the uh, set information. Okay, for each uh, letter. Okay, so we can compute that. Okay, kapag ito, expand natin from the table. Okay, if we actually use these probabilities, okay, and um, use this formula, expand this formula, we will come up with this statement. Okay, so please verify that this computes to 2.1100 bits per letter. Okay, again, the units is bits. Okay, uh, the, unit, the, the unit here, bits, pertains to the uh, amount of information okay and not the uh, number of bits okay now that not the number of bits of the code word okay hindi yun pinag usapan natin dito okay dito since we're talking about entropy we're talking about the amount of information now kaya siya bits because we have used uh, the base 2 logarithm in the computation of the entropy so since ginamit natin yung uh, base 2 logarithm, so the unit of the entropy becomes bits per letter. Okay? So this is now the entropy of your uh, source. Okay? Next, let's compute the average number of bits per source letter. Ito yung ano, um, this average number of bits per source letter, ito yung arbar. Okay? This is arbar. Okay. Now, ang arbar kasi ay nakadepende sa code word lengths. Okay? Nakadepende siya sa code word lengths and at the same time sa probability of each symbol. So, nakadepende siya sa code word lengths and at the same time sa probability of occurrence of each letter. Okay? So, ayan. Now, let's ano, let's try to determine yung ano, yung mga code word lengths nung ating na design na, or na synthesized na code. So, going back to the table, okay? Uh, and having this as the ano, the codes, okay? Na na, na, na synthesized natin using Huffman ano. By the way, we can call this now ano. We can call this code as ano, Huffman code. Since we have used the Huffman algorithm okay, in order to synthesize this code, so we can call now this code, okay, this set of code words as the Huffman code. Okay. So we determine now the, ano, the um, set of code word lengths for each of our code. So we have uh, two, uh, two, two, then three, four, five, and 5. So ito ngayon yung magiging set of code word lengths natin. Okay? So now we compute now, okay, we compute now the um average uh, average code word length, okay? Or average number of bits per source letter, okay? Using this formula. Okay? That is we multiply 2. Okay, we multiply 2 with the probability associated with uh, or the probability of occurrence of x1, which is 0.35. Okay? Then, uh, this next um, code word length 2 okay, is multiplied to the probability of occurrence of x2, and so on and so forth. Okay? So, we now, ano, we now um, compute this, okay? And um, please verify that um, this, ano, this uh, operation Okay, would actually result to the following average code word length. Okay, so this is now your average code word length, which is arbar. Okay, so ayon. Again, 
alalahan lang natin ulit that our uh, uh, that, that the entropy of our source is 2.11 uh, bits per letter. Okay, this, this is our entropy. Okay, ito yung entropy natin. Tapos, ito yung um, uh, ating average code word length. Okay, ito. Now, what, we, what can we say about the relationship of the two? Okay, we take note, we, we observe that R bar is greater than the entropy. Okay, again, this is um, from the, uh, ano, this is from the, yung, yung condition na to is actually set by the um, lossless uh, source coding uh, theorem which we discussed in the previous lesson. Okay? So, in that case, okay, in that case, it is this code that, that we, we were able to design or the Huffman code that we were able to synthesize is a lossless source code that is decodable because it satisfies the, it satisfied the, um, the condition set forth by the lossless source coding theorem. Okay? Now, um, at the start of this, uh, no, discuss, this, this discussion, we have mentioned that the Huffman codes are considered to be compact codes. Okay? So again, when, uh, when you say uh, codes are compact, or uh, when you say compact word, codes, uh, these are codes having uh, the least, having the least R bar. Okay? or least average code word length. Okay? So, yun yung ibig sabihin ng compact codes. Okay? Now, this should imply, okay, that this average code word length is the least value of R bar among the source codes that can be synthesized for the source. Okay? Any, so, any, ano, any um, algorithm Okay, any algorithm that ke that will design or that ano, that um that will synthesize codes for the source that does not use the Huffman algorithm will result in a higher value of R bar. Mas mataas yung magiging value ng R bar para sa iba pang codes na ide-design or isi-synthesize natin using algorithms that are not based on Huffman algorithm. Okay? Now, let us define the efficiency of the codes, okay, using this symbol, percent eta, okay, or percent, yeah, percent eta. Uh, so this is the efficiency of your codes as this one. So it's 100 times the entropy divided by R bar, okay? So ito yung sinasabi ko kanina that um, the, lower the, ano, the lower the value of um, R bar, okay, or the closer, sabi, uh, I, I mentioned earlier that the closer, uh, remember, the condition was, ano, the condition was um, your average code word length should be great, uh, at, at least, okay, uh, your entropy, okay? Pero uh, I mentioned, uh, we, we mentioned earlier that um, the the closer the R bar to H or to entropy, the more efficient the synthesized code is. Mas efficient yung code kapag ka mababa yung R bar. Which is obvious naman dahil um, since if we measure our efficiency in terms of um, transmitting uh transmitting codes uh it is more efficient to uh, to, to, to transmit uh shorter codes than longer codes so therefore lower r bar uh, results to more efficient codes okay so obvious naman din to sa formula na to because if we have your r bar to be lower then this increases the efficiency okay now if we actually compute the efficiency of the Huffman code that we have generated earlier it is 95.5% efficient Okay, so again, you can verify in equation 26 here in this equation. Okay, so you can verify here, okay, that 
um, higher R bar, okay, which means longer average code words, okay, or longer code words by average, okay, uh, results to codes with low efficiency and are considered then as inefficient codes. Okay. Now, if you check the craft number of the Huffman code that we have just synthesized, okay. So since, again, the um, set of code word lengths for this one is um, 2, 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5. Okay, so th this is 2, 2, 2, 3, uh, 4, 5, 5. Okay, so uh, we can compute the craft number as um, 3 times 2 raised to negative 2. So ito yun. Okay plus 2 raised to negative 3, plus 2 raised to negative 4, plus 2 times 2 raised to negative 5. So please verify that this computes to 1. And since this is 1, okay, uh, the craft number for this Huffman code that we have generated is or satisfies the craft inequality. So this satisfies the craft inequality. So, which means for this set of code word lengths, um, uh, codes that satisfy um, the prefix condition condition can be synthesized. Okay, makakapag synthesize tayo ng source codes that satisfy the prefix condition because we can see that the uh, that, the, that, that this set of code word lengths okay satisfies the Kraftman at uh, the craft inequality okay now pwede nyo ngayon i-check okay let us check actually so these are the codes that we have generated these are the Huffman codes uh, that we have generated for uh, using the Huffman algorithm so this is the Huffman codes that we have just uh, synthesized, okay? So upon checking, we see that um, this set of code words uh, satisfy the prefix condition, okay? They satisfy the prefix condition. We cannot see any shorter codes being the start of uh, the code words of longer codes. For example, yung 0, 0, Hindi nyo makikita as the, the beginning of nito, 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 or nito. The longer uh, code words. Okay, same thing with, ano, same thing with 0, 1. Okay, same thing with 0, 1. You would not be able to see 0, 1 here, 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 or here. Okay, you would not see this starting with 0, 1. Okay, so we verify that this Huffman codes satisfy the prefix condition. Okay. So there. Now, let us recall in step six of the Huffman code algorithm or the Huffman algorithm that we have uh, Okay. Uh, uh, sige. Din -din -din ako. Okay, so so we'll end the no? we'll end the session right here. Okay, so again medyo Marami pang ano, marami pang content that we have uh, that uh, you, you have to cover pa. Okay? Uh, for you to be able to finish yung lesson uh, yung topic 2. Okay? But uh, still um, the uh, some of the ano, some of the discussions are av available na nga dun sa ano niyo. Okay, dun sa YouTube channel uh, assigned for your class. Okay? So I hope that uh, you find time uh, to ano to watch the you know the recorded ano and also don't forget to ano to finish yung pag, pag ano pag um panonood nung ano nung um recorded announcement regarding your quizzes okay so ayun so that ends up our ano our class uh, our uh, session for today okay so may